Okay, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Lair Belair. It's Friday. It's Fusion Friday. Let's take a look at this week's project. This is this week's project, the Death Clock. It is a countdown clock. This could be uh, any type of countdown event. We just thought we'd make it kind of Halloween themed because Halloween's right around the corner, right? It's always around the corner. Uh, this is, I figured I'd do a tutorial today on milling out the uh, faceplate, we can call it, the faceplate acrylic. This is a 3D printed box that holds the, uh, the LCD, the LCD, the LED display. It's a seven segment LED display. And what it does in the sketch that Phil B wrote is that you type in a, a date, a desired date, a future date, and then um, it'll do some maths to figure out the total minutes. So this is how many minutes to a certain date. This is actually, I, I, I took out the, uh, the default date for, not my death, but Haley's Comet, which is like in 2050. And then I, I put in um, the, the date for uh, this year's uh, Maker Fair. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of minutes there. Like, what is it, eight, 8 million minutes? Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of minutes. So if we look at um, my browser over here, we'll take a look at the project. This is where it resides. These are all the parts you need for the project. Some expectations, yeah, art piece. Um, the circuit, real quick. Take a look at it on your own. Some. This isn't really the tutorial for the circuit or the code. It's more about uh, CNC milling. So we'll be using acrylic. This is what I used. Um, not this specific acrylic, but this is like Other Mill's website. We're using the Other Mill CNC, um, and we're using a couple different tools. Here are all the settings that are recommended uh, for each sort of flat end mill. And so let's just jump into Fusion 360. So this is actually a design that Pedro put together. Um, these are the 3D printed parts. This is like the base plate um, that holds the or mounting plate that holds the components. And this is sort of the cover thing. Has like a little window for the LED display. And then this is an actual. This is the face plate. So you can change this out to whatever theme, maybe something different. And this is uh, drawn in, what is it drawn in? It is drawn in uh, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. Or you could do this in Inkscape, any SVG type thing. So this was an SVG. Uh, it's scaled up and then um, extruded. And uh, originally Pedro 3D printed it. And then I figured, um, why not mill it? It's, there's a lot of details going on here. Um, there's some edges here. There's some just things here that are kind of, um, they're kind of thin. So, uh, you have to be aware of what you're cutting out. Like you can see this piece here and it did end up cutting that uh, pretty well. So if we take a look again, let me, let me do a closer look at some of the details and stuff. You can see it did a pretty good job. I'm using a, um, a, it was a 132? I think it's a 132 or 164. I don't even remember, but we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll figure that stuff out when we get there. Uh, let me see if I can do... I'm just playing around with focus stuff. That way, there we go. That looks better. So yeah, so y'all can see the detail is is pretty decent. And then oh yeah, and then I have a text that's engraved here. So it says Death Clock. So that text came out really nice. And it's pretty strong. This is a acrylic that's a 2.2 millimeters thick. It's a kind of a different type of acrylic. This is some like uh, UV coated acrylic that's a little bit different than your standard uh, like edge lit acrylic. So. Uh, that's what I had at the time. I just picked up this sheet from uh, from my local hardware store. Over down here, it's called uh, Lowe's. But you can probably find some in Home Depot and stuff. But yeah, it, it's 2.2 millimeters thick. That's really important. And um, the overall stock was about yay big. The other mill has a spoiler bed that's about 4 by 5 I believe. You want to stick around like that. It's probably a little bit bigger, but you, you want to stick around uh, 4 by 5 you can look at the other mill website and it'll tell you uh, specifically the, the the max work build volume. So anyway, the first thing I would do to mill this out is to make sure that my thickness equals out to the thickness of my stock. So I can just click on this edge here and then see, yep, 2.2 millimeters. I've already went ahead and made that 2.2 millimeters. Now to make the text, there is a text tool inside of the sketches uh, 
sketches uh, drop down. So there's one here called text. It's pretty self-explanatory. You click on a face, uh, a plane or a face. So in this case, I'm working on this side here. So I'm gonna click on that. And then you get this, your, your cursor changes to like this little A. So now I can click on any anywhere. And then this dialog over here on the right side is where you type in your text. So maybe put Maker Fair, if I can spell it. Maker Fairy, Maker Fairy, there you go. Now it's really important that you use uh, a font that, the, that Fusion can interpretate into paths. And this took me a little bit because I was like trying to pick some fancy font and it didn't work. So you really have to kind of pick, I guess, true type or, or maybe it's open type, maybe not open type. I don't even know. But I do know what did work. I used time, Times New Roman and that seemed to work okay. Uh, the height is where you actually adjust the, um, the bigness of it, the size of it. So the height is, I guess, 10 millimeters tall, but it's not really 10 millimeters. You can see that the bounding box is bigger than the actual font. So you do have to play with it a little bit to get what you want. I think 12 is good. And then you use this guy here uh, to move it. Let me put OK. And then you can move it with the Modify Move tool like that. Where'd it go? Click. It's kind of slow. Ugh. And then you can move it around and do your best to like get a good placement and maybe you want it in the center maybe you don't want it in the center it's up to you where you want it and then you can you know mess with this stuff i guess you could do a point to point so you can figure out exactly where the center is but we're just going to skip that so that's pretty much what i'm going to do right there and this uh makes a new sketch we'll call it text maker fair re and that's it it'll stop sketch at the top there and that's pretty much ready we don't actually have to extrude it or uh, yeah, cut it out or extrude it. We just need it to be in the right spot, and then we'll use it as a, uh, a reference inside of the cam tool. So we're pretty much ready to go in the cam tool. So let's go ahead and go into cam tools up here where it says model. Change your workspace to cam. I already have a setup here, so I'm going to delete that, and we're going to make it new from scratch. And if you saw how I hit the home button, so our orientation is kind of out of weird. It's at a weird angle and stuff. Normally we want to cut flat on this plane here looking top down like that. That's ideally where you want to do. But because it was modeled in this way, we're going to have to fudge a little bit of the uh, or the tool uh, coordinates once we set up. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, you want to set up. This is our stock that we want to set up. How big is your stock? Um, so right now it has a... You can see it's already messed up a little bit. Our, it thinks that the Z is over here, so it thinks we're milling on this face, but we're not. We're going to mill on that face. So what I'll do is I'll just click on that arrow, the Z one, and it flips it up there like that. So now we'll be milling on top, and it thinks this is the top of your stock, so that's good. The next thing I'm going to do is go to where it's a stock point, and I'm going to click on this guy over here. So the top lower left corner of where you want your origin to be is pretty much the origin of the other mill. That's the origin of the other mill. So that's important to know. That's our X, that's our Y. That's looking pretty good. Our Z is going upwards. That's all good. Um, is my audio okay? Hello? Yeah, looks okay. And then we'll go to stock, the tab over here, the stock tab. And then we're going to doop, look at the bottom here and then you can see that there's an offset for the sides. That's okay, but the offset for the top is not okay. I'm gonna put zero. So now there's no offsets for the um, for the for the top. And what you see here is relative box size or relative size box. That's actually okay in this project. It it seems to work okay. Um, and you know, ideally you'd want to put in your your specific dimensions of your stock because your stock may vary. Maybe it's too small. Maybe it's too big. But I know that the stock I'm using is four by five, around four by five. So a relative box size will work okay. And then when we bring it into uh, other plan, which is the software that interprets the G code for the other mill, you'll actually get a preview and see that it is within the bounds of your stock and the bounds of your bed. So that's all good. Uh, so I'm gonna hit okay, because we're pretty much done with our stock. And that's our setup. So now we have a stock set up. Cam tools know 
where it is, where it is on the bed, and how thick the material is, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this uh, this opening here. This is the opening for the LED display. And to do that, we're going to use a 2D contour. 2D contour does what it's what it's what it says when you roll over it. 2D contour it does a cut, a single cut. And it's not going to like eliminate all this area. You'll just have to pop it out or it'll stay in place because what we do is we're going to use double stick tape to keep our stock on the bed, which works really well. So you don't have to worry about it flying out of the bed as long as you use enough tape, which is pretty good. It's kind of hard to orient with this uh, with this orientation, but just deal with it, right? So I'm going to click on this bottom edge here of the cutout, and that is our stock. I just clicked on it. By default, it's already, it's already seeking what, to, what do you want to cut. And then I'll go to the tool, and this is where we get the selector tool. So for this one, I'm going to so scroll down all the way to the bottom. Uh, in my first tutorial, I already talked about how to import uh, the Fusion 360 tools for our other mill. That's over here under intro. This is uh, other mill code slash support. And then down here, you can see there's a tool library. And then there is a, uh, a JSON file that has all the tools for, uh, for the other mill. And here's how to install it. So go through that if you do want to do that. You'll need to do that, obviously. All right, so I'm going to pick uh, this tool here, the 132 inch. Yep, that one looks good. I'll hit OK. So that's the tool we're going to use now for the speeds. In, in for the speeds, uh, I am referencing the. There we go. Back the um, the recommended settings for acrylic in the other mill site. So this is the tool here. So I remember these guys. So our spindle speed will drop down to 16,400. The cutting speed will be 1,500, which is pretty fast. And the plunge rate will be 381. And these are millimeters. Obviously, they have both. They have millimeters and inches. You can change it. Fusion doesn't care. Fusion can interplay inches and millimeters. It's all good. Uh, so that's pretty much our, our feeds and speed settings, and our geometry is selected. Now we're going to go to passes. Passes are going to make it so that we can do multiple step downs so that we are less aggressive on our bit so we don't break it. Because if we were to do one pass, like just drill all the way down and then cut, that, that, that might break your bit. That will most likely break your bit. So I'm going to click on multiple depths, and I'm going to bring this down. If you look here, it says the, uh, the recommended uh, max pass depth, which is really a step down. 0 0.08 millimeters. That is really conservative, and that is what I'm going to do. I don't want to break your bit. I used to do like 0 .0, 0 0.4 or 0.2, and that's that's still like really pushing it. And um, I'm going to stick with that just to be conservative. And I think that's why they did that in this here, so that you wouldn't break your bit. So actually, over here they say 0 0.25 in the recommended, and then they have like advanced stuff here. So I'm not sure why they dropped it down, but I have experimented with 0.4 and 0.2. It, it does work, but for you guys, I'm going to just say point, maybe 0.1. How about that? Compromise here, 0.1. All right. So now Fusion's going to uh, add these little perp these little blue lines, and that is a indicator of how many step downs and where the tool paths are for it. So at this point, we can click on our simulate button. And what I like to do is I like to turn off the toolpaths and then turn on stock and then I will turn off the model so that I can see what it's doing so now when I hit play you can see um, how deep it's cutting where it's cutting um, and it's really really slow because I'm streaming right now so that's what's going on so Obviously, this is going too slow. I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to go to the end of the toolpath by clicking this button here. And you can get to see that it does cut all the way through. And you'll see here that there's a little bit of a nibble here. See that nibble? Right there. That is OK. Since this is going to get thrown away anyway, it doesn't matter. Our orientation of our tool is pretty good. And you'll know that there's like a little bit of a uh, radius, a little bit of a fillet there. And that's because that's the, the radius of the tool. If we were to use a 164 inch bit, it would be even finer there. So I'll hit close. So that's our first bit. Let me turn on the model again. 
Next thing I want to do is I want to do the text. Let's do the text. The last thing you want to do is the the, ma the massive cutout, just just to you know, just because you could do it next, but I'm going to do this one next. So to do a uh, to do some text, we use this um, under 2D. There's this thing called engrave, and engrave uses an engraving bit, which is a bit that is um, not a flat end mill, but uh, it has like a very tapered edge and a very fine point. So uh, for the other mill, there's um, two of them. One of them isn't listed, but this is one I have. It's called the 80 degree. Um, you can see the, the, the tool here. It's really, really um, fine tipped. So this is ideal for chamfers and for engravings. So I'll hit OK. I'm going to do the same setting, 16400 for the spindle. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. We'll do 1500. Pretty much the same stuff. And the plunge rate is 381. Everything else is just fine. And here's where we get to pick uh, our text. So here's, I'm just hovering over the Maker Faire uh, text. Click on that. And this is how you know if your text is true type or not. Like, well, does, does, it, does uh, Fusion know how to interpret, interpret, interpret the, the font into a toolpath? Yes, it can, because it's got this red outline. So we're good there. And you see it's got a terrible render of it. You see how pixelated it is, right? But whatever, it's just the way it previews it. So that's good. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to passes, or yeah, was it passes? No, heights. This is where you tell how deep of a cut you want. So for bottom height, I'm gonna put negative 0.4 or maybe negative 0.2. And that's how deep you wanna cut into the material. How deep do you want your thing to be? So I'm gonna hit okay. And now we can uh, take a look. You see these little yellow lines, it's just telling us where it's gonna retract. So again, we're gonna have to turn off this guy here, and then we can see the blue. This is the sort of the travel of the toolpath. It's still not exactly what it's gonna look like, so I'm gonna click on simulate, turn on stock over here, and then go to the end of the toolpath by clicking on that button. Give it a second, and there's what it's gonna look like, and that's pretty much what it'll look like. That's how deep we're cutting, and you get this, this sort of, uh, beveled edge looking font and it's just doing one pass you know there's there's no like multiple paths multiple depths it's just one single pass and depending on how deep you you want to engrave you'll get a different effect you'll get a different um you get a different edge so that's what it looks like i think it's pretty good all right so that's pretty much it for that at this point we can hit close and start our last set up our last processy, which is going to be the cutout. Bring that back there. So our last cutout is going to be this contour in the back here. So here's where we um, can play around with uh, the uh, the contour inner outer. And I'll show you what that means because I don't know how else to explain it. So I, I made a new contour. This is called contour four, whatever we can rename it. I'm going to pick the same tool that we have, the uh, 132. Okay. And I'll go ahead and update the settings again. 1500, 381. And our geometry is going to be this guy over here, this whole thing, this whole chain. So I'm click on that. And you can see here. That's looking okay so far. I'll do multiple depths again. And 0.1 is what I want. That's pretty much it. I'll hit okay. It's gonna calculate it. It's, um, it's gonna process it. And that looks pretty good. I, it, it nailed it right on the thing. But I wanna show you what happens when it did when it doesn't. When I first did this, it, it wasn't nailing it. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So when you go to uh, your geometry, you have this red line here. And this red line indicates that you are cutting on the outside of the path as opposed to the inside of the path. So when I first did it, it was like this. And that is the inside of the path. And I did not know that that was going to mess things up. So I'll show you what this means. So let's say that by default it did that. So if we were to simulate this with an inset path, and then I go to the end of the thing and then turn off the model, you can see that it just can't look, look at all this pieces that it cut out. 
because what it's thinking is that the, that you're using this outer stock area as the the as the final piece as opposed to this cutout here. So look at look at our um our stuff here, and I was all like didn't know which what was going on until I started playing with that, and I noticed that red line, the red arrow, and so that's what you need to do if you have a detailed cut you might need to play with the the inset or the offset i guess that's the one way to say it so i'll go back to edit go back to uh, geometry and then i will click on that arrow and you see you, you see you can see how it's like on the inside of the path now it's on the outside of the path so i'll hit okay generates and now at this point now we have all three processes we can click on the main setup here and then click on simulate and it'll simulate the whole the whole uh, group so I'll click on stock and it's processing it you can see the little red line over here chugging away and uh, you'll get different colors uh, to to show off uh, different processes so you can see that the the copper color is um, the contour number four the engraving is engraving number two I'm just calling it whatever they called it here and this is where you get to inspect it our cutouts look okay. It's looking pretty sharp and crisp. Um, and that's about it. That is pretty much what I had to do to cut this out. Um, yeah, so we're using a total of just two bits, two tools, uh, 132 and a engraving bit. So at this point, we can export them out. Uh, I recommend exporting out uh, the group of a single one. So actually, you're gonna have to since the since the order is a little bit off, I'm gonna have to export them out one by one. So this processy, I just right, right click, post process, hit OK, save it to your project folder. You have to name it with a extension of .nc. Not sure why, but that's that's what it is. It's G code, but other planner wants a .nc, and I, I'm not sure. I'm in a different project, but whatever. So. Let's just pretend like we exported them out and then we would jump into other plan. I'm using other plan pro because I'm using the other mill pro and um, you can use other mill classic if you have the other mill basic, I guess we'd call it. This is where you would type in your, um, your tools or your tools, your, um, the size of your stock and then the thickness. I don't remember what uh, two. Where let me hear. Yeah, two point two over here. Two point two, zero point zero eight six. So I would put in zero eight six for the thickness there. Uh, the placement here is important. So on the Z, I have a little bit of tape, and the tape is point zero zero two inches thick. So that's why I have that set there. Depending on your tape, you'll need to insert your thing accordingly. So now I can open up files. I think it's going to be product, projects. And then let me fumble around here. What was this thing called? Death Clock? I don't even know. Yeah, Death Clock. OK. And then I think I have G code. Yeah, cool. So in this case, I exported it out. And you can see, like, uh oh, my stock is too small. It's because it's supposed to be. Four by five. So make sure your stock is, oops, wrong way. Uh, put five here. There you go, that fits. Um, front view, top view. So it looks a little bit backwards. Oh yeah, that's because of the way I export in the original thing, whatever, it's all good. So you don't see a preview yet. That's because uh, over here in the side, you have to select a tool. So we're using the 132 tool. And you know what? Um, I'm doing you guys a disservice. I should export these out. So let me export these out. And since we're live, I can't edit out this tedious setup of exporting out three a total of three <laughs> tools. And it's going to take forever, so sorry, guys. Because I'm streaming and my computer is slow. Yeah, it is, it is chugging. Like it's like a second lag delay. It's all good. So I'll call this 
like uh, inner window. You can be as descriptive as you want, obviously. This is our engraving. Yeah, my computer can barely handle it. This is the 130, or this is the engraving. Just gonna replace it. This is the outer cut. Outer cut. Alright. Now we're back in other plan. Yep, remembers where I am. Here's the outer win inner window. Pick 132. It says still pass may cause collisions. That's bad. Whoa. The uh, the orientation is way off, which is kind of wrong. If that happens, you 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 have to play with your orientation. I'm pretty sure it should be right, but I'm not sure why it's wrong. So we're gonna move through this. So what you can do is uh, inside the um, inside the project here, your, your file you can you can manually place and position things. Um, in Other Mill Pro, you used to you, you don't have the luxury of uh, Other Mill Basic where you can like click and drag it around. You have to input it here, so that's a pain. But uh, sometimes you have to work around that. Here's the outer cut. Same thing, it's telling me there's tool collisions. Not sure why. Eh, that's the, you know, one of the unsuspected things of doing a live uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. It won't even let me uh, mill it. I'm not sure. It says it's going to collide with the frame. That is not what happened when I actually milled it. But anyway. The point of the tutorial was more or less about setting it up in Fusion. <laughs> yeah, so uh, to, to alleviate this, obviously, we would go into Fusion and change our setup here. Let's bring back the model. So where it says stock point, yeah. I would do it this way instead, like that. So that way, although it is a little bit different where we want the orientation to be, it's it's more lined up with uh, the the axes here. So you see, like the arrow is pointing that way and it's pointing this way, and this is origin. So that's not too bad. Though I, I'm not sure about the the um, the tool collision thing because. Uh, Fusion would, would tell me that, and I would see little red arrows when simulating it. But we didn't get that, so. Uh, see how these got invalid toolpaths? That's because I changed the origin. So to update those, you just hit Command-G on your keyboard, and it'll reprocess those. And then I would have to export them out. But for the sake of time, I think that's going to be it. Um, I'm going to check out some stuff here. All right, so... Real quick, some last things I wanted to talk about was the other mail, if you want to pick it up. It is, we got like one left in the stock. I know it's expensive, but it's because it's really fine precision. Uh, the software is pretty good, and they have a great team, and you get like warranty with it. Another thing is drill bits. Um, I recommend getting drill bits from Amazon. They are a little bit cheaper, and you get Prime, and you can get a lot of variations. So, for example, uh, this drill bit, the, 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 the ones that are available in the other mail shop, they're a little bit shorter. The cutting length is shorter. So these are longer cutting lengths. So this this is this has a cutting length of one thirty two. The other ones are like a lot smaller. So with this you could probably cut out thicker materials. So I recommend doing that. Uh, that's about it. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the chat. I'll take a look at them now. Do, 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 do. Awesome, yes. Yeah, I'm using tape. Hello, hello everybody. Thanks for joining the chat. Alright, well, I gotta get out of here and 
pick up kiddo and do lunch. But thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah, we'll try to sort this out, you know, a little bit later. But uh, hey, we're making progress. All right, guys, if you, want, if you haven't seen the project already, check it out. It's on YouTube, and it's in the learning guide. Um, Death Clock. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. But until then, remember to keep on making. Bye, everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.